Today's lesson is sitting to lying, uh, side sitting to lying, and lying to side sitting transition. Um, there is no Alexandria and I lesson that I can mention because this is sort of a, a mix of a few lessons, but uh, it's a simple and functional lesson, and I I strongly recommend to play it very gently. I'm going to teach it for about 10 minutes and uh, just remember that it can take about an hour to really do it well and gently and to benefit from it. Um, if you like to follow along, please lie on the floor. Scan yourself briefly. Compare the two sides. Bend your knees, then your feet, and roll over to lie on your side, and move up to side sitting. And notice how it went, because this is really the lesson. The lesson is transitioning from lying to side sitting, and from side sitting to lying. As you're sitting in side sitting with your knees to the right and feet to the left, notice your comfort level, notice your, the difference between the right and the left side in the pelvis. Maybe you feel one sits bone, maybe both. Maybe you're not even on a sits bone. Maybe you're lying a little bit too far to the side and you're actually leaning on your thigh bone, on the great trochanter part of the, the thigh bone. So do that. Do that to make it easier for you, everyone, even if, you're having, even if you have an easy time sitting upright. Lean in your right hand and begin playing with a, an inquiry regarding the lifting of your knee which knee could lift. So play around and see which, which knee can you begin to lift. What's the easier knee to lift and how do you do it? Do you use yourself? Hmm. This is easy to lift. This is maybe not so easy. Maybe it's easier to lift it much smaller. Maybe I can use my, my body, my torso, the position of my hand to make the lifting of a knee easier or more difficult. Maybe it's easy to lift both knees for some people. And maybe that's enough for some of you, right? And maybe you want to do more. Maybe it's possible for you to do more. Maybe, maybe there is more flexibility in the rib cage and spine, and you're able to go even beyond towards the other side. Okay? So after playing with this for a little bit, give it up and rest. And when you come back to this position, exploring more please begin playing with the position of your hands so you begin with the right hand on the floor and then the left hand exploring the space around so we have our front knee the knee that, that's right in front of us versus the knee that's for the leg that's behind us right let's focus on the knee that's in front and place both hands on both sides of the knee and begin to explore the space here and since, so the, the, the mission is to explore the space in a comfortable way, but what it really demands of you is to move your torso about. And whether you notice it or not, you're going to begin to find ways to support yourself all around those sits bones. Maybe gradually crawling forward, maybe up to the point of even resting your entire forearm on the floor, maybe the other leg, the other mm -hmm. arm as well, or maybe it's just one arm and one hand, right? Maybe, maybe there's a sense that going further behind you, in which, in this case, to the right, may feel a little bit easier. And maybe for some of you, it is actually more to the left. It depends on a bunch of details regarding your organization and alignment and self-use. And once you feel comfortable with what you've accomplished as far as exploring the space behind you with both hands, allowing for the, this is a very important detail I forgot to mention, let your head be relaxed, okay? Let your, let your head feel gravity and don't fight it. Let it come close to the floor whenever you can. Make everything easy 
And then once you're ready, begin to take that exploration into lying on the floor, right? So a little bit more behind you, maybe this arm, maybe you're leaning on this one, maybe you take turns, but ultimately the right arm would need to either come under your head to transition to the floor, or maybe it will need to come to the front if you prefer to roll more on your shoulder blade rather than on the whole arm. So please rest for a moment again. And when you come back to the movement, and please make the rests count, take longer rests, allow your, your system to integrate, to process this work, and, and please begin exploring how you can twist a little bit in, in side sitting. So you can take if I turn to the right, it will be my left hand resting in front of me. So there is a there is a connection between the arm and the head, right? A connection where you don't just let the arm go without the head or let the head go without the arm, but instead they move together. Okay? And when we can we make this connection of the arm or let's say that the that there is a a, a um, imaginary connection between the nose and, and the hand, what happens is, is that spine, the cervical spine, all the way up to maybe T2 or 3, uh, there's no twist here, right? If I would let the head go beyond, it would be a twist. But because I keep the head and hand together, I encourage a little extra rotation further down below in the thorax and in the lumbar, mostly in the lumbar, of course. So that would be one way of exploring. And then if you want to take it further, you can let the hand go beyond and let the head continue to turn, right, to get a more complete twist. Please lie on the floor again. And after a little rest, please bend your knees and stand your feet. And rest the right ankle on the left knee. And begin tilting both knees as they are in this organization. To the right and back to the center, very slowly and very simply. You may have done this, less, these, this sequence of movements before. Again, if it's okay for you to be with the ankle on the knee, that's great. If you feel that that's not something that works for you. You can cross the knees on top of each other to make it a little bit easier for yourself. But as you can tell, as the movement gradually grows, as you allow for the knees to tilt a little bit further to the right every time, letting gravity do its work, doing it very passively, very softly, you may begin to recognize that your head, kind of on its own, begins to turn in the opposite direction. It completes the twisting of the of the spine in a in its wholesome. It's a global twist of the entire spine. So the, the twisting of the lower spine is kind of inviting, it ripples up the spine and inviting the opposite rotation in the top of the spine by the head. And after you rest this, you can explore the other another variation on a theme, which is keeping the, the knee, lower leg and foot on the left side to keep it this part, to keep this post stationary, right? So this is staying stationary, it does not tilt like this to the right anymore, but you're allowing for the right knee to lower, to come down and away from you, and at the same time lifting the left hip from the floor a little bit. So it's, a, it's, a, it's almost like a little seesaw action where the right knee of the left hip go in opposite direction or actually the, the right hip goes down and the left hip lifts. 
and then the left hip goes back down to the floor and the right knee lifts. And this is a very interesting work in the lumbar and lower thoracic spine and please take it easy and go slow and let yourself discover the way with which you can do it more and more easily. And so the ribs underneath you are going to learn to support themselves on the floor and the arching in the lower back is going to become more comfortable. And please give it up and rest again. In the next sequence of movements, please come back to side sitting and if you like, you can transition from lying on the back and bending your knees and you can sort of mimic the same idea that repeats in this lesson which is tilt your knees to the side and and come up to side sitting right this is really the lesson right and you can use it more or less during the lesson so once again you're side sitting and we're keeping to the right as you can see you can do the other variation when you do the full lesson and then you begin to Take both hands to the floor, transition into here, and maybe you can choose to stop and come back just to kind of refine this part of how you come to the floor and play with reversibility. How can you not just collapse to the floor but change your mind about going further up or further down whenever you need to, right? But if you can notice, I'm allowing my head to relax. I do not lift my head or look around so that the movement is very very easy. And once you're here, you can also stop a little bit and play with the idea of staying on your side in a side sitting position. And then using this top left leg the, with the pelvis and knee, you can even initially lengthen the leg and push it down to see how it helps you it pulls on the pelvis and how it lifts you up. Or you can simply roll a little bit forward, use both hands and climb up. Notice that as you come down, this left leg here is actually helping in controlling this, the speed, the ease with which you go down to the floor. Counterbalance. Once you've figured out the lesson on, on one side and then try to explore it on the other side, which is quite different always for everyone, you can begin to, to just go from side to side, right? You can go from side to side on the floor. That was interesting. As I was coming up on the left side, I was pushing instead of letting it happen, right? That was smoother, come up to sit, and then you can also change your knees from side to side in sitting, right? So you can come this way. And that's the lesson. Please play with it gently so that you can really benefit from it and you can really improve not just your side sitting position or lying down position, not only the transition itself, but as you come up afterwards, you may feel in walking or in just in the, the few hours following the lesson, you can begin to observe changes, little differences in some, some of the things that you habitually do. All right? Play with it, enjoy, and let me know your thoughts or comments or questions. Take care.